Okay, and usually uh, when I'm doing this, I always reach a point where uh, you've got all this madness going on, all this craziness happening, and uh, you've improvised all these different sections on it. I usually have to have at some point some way of organizing it all or, or taking a look at it. Sometimes just changing a bass note uh, doesn't do it, doesn't cut it. Sometimes changing the bass note's fine, but harmonically you have to look at what else is happening there in the music. And uh, I just want to show you a, 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 a system I use for checking it out. I call these my Yada sheets because um, I call, we, we have a nickname for stuff, uh, a lot of, you know, synthesizer and sequencer music with the bass line going and things like that. Uh, my friends are always saying, yeah, it's kind of like just Yada, it's like Yada, 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 Yada all the time. So um, that's the nickname for 16th note stuff. And I do, I like 16th notes a lot. I like stuff that's, that's busy if it's organized and everything. And uh, here, um, if you can see, I'm able to take each stave can represent a different MIDI channel or a uh, track in the sequencer. And I'm able to look at each, analyze each different 16th note for each bar and see exactly what's going on there. And so when I change a bass note or something, I can see what else is going on harmonically right then in the music. And uh, it really assists me in, in making sense of all this sometimes. Because at some point you have to uh, make sense of it. Now there's uh, there are some computer programs I've been checking out that'll do this, especially with something that's, that's quantized to 16th notes. Things that'll do this automatically, but um, at this point in time, I have found it more to the point to just whip out the old pencil and do it myself than uh, be editing on a, on a program with bugs in it that isn't quite finished yet. Yes, but you know, at some point, it's time to uh, compile all this information we have, all these, these, these notes and sequences. And uh, one thing I'd like to jump into right now is the, uh, the use of multi-sequencers in a setup like this. The reason why uh, you have more than one sequencer, or the reason why I have more than one, one sequencer in my setup isn't for looks at all. It's, it's uh, because each one does its job, its individual job, very well. And I like to use sequencers only for what they do well. And... Um, We've already seen what, what the 9000 does, or, or um, what I tried to make it do well. And uh, one thing, I, one little technique I'm going to show you now is how I take what I've done in a sequencer like the 9000, and how I compile it together into another sequencer, like this Roland MC500 here. And I do that because uh, while the 9000 is very good for doing spontaneous things and building layers like I was doing there, it's not a sequencer of its type is, is not very much... Uh, fun to edit with or, or, or arrange your music. And um, after I've written things out on paper and I've checked them out, I like to put, them in a, I like to, to put things into a machine that editing is a lot easier with. And the MC500 seems to do that for me. Um, what we should talk about again, remember here, what's, what I'm about to do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna transfer the sequence from one sequence to the other. And uh, when I say transfer, I'm actually gonna play it in to the one sequencer from another sequencer. Sequencers, uh, these MIDI, MIDI sequencers, they don't care where they get their MIDI information from. They don't know if it's a MIDI keyboard or if it's uh, drum pads or another sequencer. Being that uh, these individual machines run their own indi individual clocks, I'm gonna sync this one up to the other one. I'm gonna make sure that this is routed. This guy is now gonna be our MIDI source. This sequencer is now gonna be our destination. And yes, our routing is fine. And what I'm going to do is play our sequence and actually play it into this sequencer here. And uh, what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to make those changes in our different sections, if you remember. And uh, this will be remembering them just as if I was playing them that way on a keyboard or something else. Let me show what I mean. Let me just put this guy on record and let's go. <laughs> That's enough for this uh, for these purposes here. What we'll do now is we can see that the sequence, the music portion of it anyway, now lives in this sequencer.
And there it is. And see what we can do now. I can extract individual MIDI channels. I can extract, change those different tracks around. Um, I can put this in a microscope mode it has and be able to look. Look at the individual notes. Check it with my sheet for mistakes or errors and make corrections if I want to. It's much easier to edit that way. And uh, also then I have my, my complete form of my song all living in here. And uh, any editing as far as uh, MIDI controls go with dynamics and stuff like that is much easier carried out in a machine of this type than a machine of this type.